Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and I want to give you a final little wrap up of our attendees character as it has been informally called, and that is for the cast while channeling arc, while clearing, and then pure lightning tendrils inquisitor. I did want to give you one more little uh, clip session as well as the actual full elder guardian and elder run in something like tier nine to 12 maps. And uh, that went pretty well. This was finally when I got my level 20 gems, and that's when I wanted to go in and really get a comfortable sense of what this character can do when it's uh, pretty ramped up. It has just a five link though still, but it did have level 21 uh, t lightning tendrils even, because I got lucky with that. So it's pretty close to its maximum. The only real difference is I could have had a sixth link. But just in these last couple of clips, I did want to more or less highlight how well uh, this character really perform with large packs of monsters and that's even without a arc chain enchant on your helm if you get another three chains on your helm you have a total of 10 chains whereas for the most part i'm only showing off six chains on my arc because it's not even level 20 in these clips so the breaches and the abysses themselves uh, fell really nicely to the chaining power of arc and the single target damage of tendrils it's just a really nice combo to uh, have together when mapping for your you know decent single target and then decent clearing so the cast while channeling worked an absolute treat and then i do have all of these uh, elder guardian clips now for the most part they're anywhere from tier i think 10 to 12 maybe even one tier nine i think um, and yeah, it went really well. So once I got my damage up to speed with a level 21 tendrils even, still on a five link, uh, the process becomes really straightforward. You just stand next to them, get your deeps in, uh, for the most part rely on a little bit of flasks for uh, sustain and uh, survivability, have a rejuve totem down and a stone golem, and for the most part that will keep you alive almost always. Uh, the stone golem does die quite routinely, and the rejuve totem also dies quite routinely, but you use them to actually recover preemptively uh, before you think you're going to be taking significant amounts of damage, and it does actually really help quite a lot. It's close to 10% regen per second, and uh, that means that you don't necessarily always have to rely on your life flask, and the leech itself isn't really special because we're just using a warlord's cast or damage taken leech every now and again and of course without Valpact it's really not that amazing and as I mentioned in the previous video you can still build it a lot more defensively with the whole mind over matter pious path sort of thing but I wanted to go for pretty much as much damage as I possibly could and not fool around with any of the mana regen shit I think it still is very much an option for inquisitors uh, just not necessarily this one because I felt freeze and shock was enough of a defense throughout the entire game that just going mind over matter and pious path for guardians themselves just wasn't really worth it because that's the only place that would really actually shine on these big single targets that i didn't care too much about i mostly wanted to enjoy mapping on the character which i did to its absolute fullest so it's up to you guys i'd say how exactly you want to build this character but i think personally it's much more of a mapper and uh, just a bit of a clear speed kind of guy while uh, if you want pure single target you probably want to go to a different build different character but it does still hold its own as you can see just a little bit here or there now a lot of these guardians i'm still pretty um kind of new to still trying to learn i think this is only in total my third run of uh, all of these guardians and the elder and uh it is still a little bit hectic and pretty clusterfucky and without a fast enough character, you definitely won't be dodging a lot of this shit. But um, if you've built your character to a certain wellness or degree, you can, for the most part, tank a lot of things. Uh, over here is an example of where I couldn't tank where I thought I could. And uh, yeah, I think it should, for the most part, be very tankable, even in the red tiers of maps, because none of these actually even have any dangerous mods, like the Shaper Guardians we are used to having. They're just white maps, so there's always a certain baseline of Guardian that you're fighting. It never gets any harder, uh, except for just more life and a bit more damage when we're talking red tier versus yellow tier and all of that. So that's the four Guardian runs. Went down pretty uneventfully. I died once because I got overconfident, and then came into Elder himself. Now, he's actually a lot more straightforward once you have decent bit of survivability and also really good DPS to just push through the phase pretty quickly. So um, yeah, you just have to kind of learn what you're doing there. Be fairly mobile almost always, because it's uh, whenever you stand still for too long, that's when you can definitely get in trouble. So always 
pretty much always be shield charging around as much as possible uh, and only stopping every few seconds here or there and actually really pay attention to what he's doing because it should be somewhat predictable. Uh, I still mess up plenty, but it's definitely um, not as impossible as I first thought it was going to be. But like I said earlier, DPS really does go a long way to uh, helping you get through this fight. Because the more DPS you have, the far less you have to deal with all of his bullshit. And uh, this whole freeze thing sometimes I just can't seem to avoid because still pretty shit, I guess. But uh, yeah, if you have a nice Rejuve Totem, Stone Golem, and Life Flask, uh, you can very much negate that damage quite comfortably. The only biggest issue I suppose you would have seen just there is that with um, Conk Effect on our 5 link single target, it just means that we're pretty much a melee character. So bear that in mind, you won't really be doing too much range stuff, you do have to be up in the grill of the face of uh, all of your bosses. And uh, I'm not going to show too much of this because this phase is pretty damn boring. If you haven't come across it yet, it's just you have to save Shaper from, I don't know, he, he stops four portals or some shit opening and you have to just save him from each portal by killing all of the other portals and monsters. And it takes something like three minutes or some shit. It is a fairly lengthy process and there's not too much action going on here. Once you do that, you just burn down um, the Elder and then stand inside Zana's bubble and job's done. So it's a pretty straightforward fight in the end once you have the damage and once you know what you're doing. And uh, Tendies seemed to perform fairly well in all of that aspect once it's fully ramped up. I do want to show you guys one map without any um, editing and all that just to show you exactly what you're dealing with because the character is not so bad at clear speed in its final form. So like I said, I want to show you guys just a quick map before um, you, you know, call a day with this guy just to see the actual uh, mapping experience of the character uh, unedited and all that because at this point it is fairly fast I think in any case so you probably stone golem you have a reach of totem and jumping about um, for the most part I do use blood rage quite a lot and all the storms comes into play for our like I said arcane surge and power charge on crit so I press it quite liberally um, and then otherwise yep shield charge and just keep all flasks up and you got yourself some pretty decent clear speed, um, I think, anyway. And the Impulse's Heart is really where things feel a lot nicer, thanks to, well, the little explosions, the bleed explosions. I should mention this map, I think, has um, fire damage, so it's unid would so you can't see it anymore because I had to corrupt it. Um, it is fire damage, monster damage, and a double boss. So you charge in between packs, you make sure you're pressing an Orb of Storms just about always uh, before you attack things. Quite often you can see when I do press that Orb of Storms it should uh, actually freeze things and shock things before even actually starting. And then Abysses over here, like I mentioned, with the arc, with the amount of damage you have from your tendies, uh, it's really quite clean. And tendies don't really shoot very far, you can definitely see. So it's up to you if you want to um, hold still and just channel a bit longer to get your arc happening. A little bit off screen, not entirely off screen, but you know, off of your range. You can see where it comes into play for having a call of the Brotherhood. Uh, you're freezing all of this shit before it has a chance to do any sort of damage to you. And overall, I just found it a pretty damn satisfying character to play. Uh, nifty. Nifty and nifty. Uh, just because, yeah, the explosions, the chains, the freezes, and uh, as far as a spell character or spell damage dealing character goes, it was just a pretty smooth playstyle overall. I rarely died, even though, you know, you don't have instant leech and vile pact and all that anymore, or uh, anything too huge in the defense category, but very rarely died, and uh, the only huge hardships were against the guardians themselves. And uh, when you want to go into huge single target damage, you just swap out your castle channeling and your arc into tendrils, and um, here's four bosses right here. So the more bosses, the merrier, thanks to our uh, arc chaining and all that. But like I said, if you really want to go into single target, jump um, arc out of there, uh, lightning in there. So conk and added lightning instead of channeling and arc. But that almost never happens, like I said, pretty much only against the Guardians, maybe some tier 15 bosses and that sort of thing. But for the most part, 
that's what the character looks like. That's um, when it's fully ramped up with good, pretty much good gear everywhere I can get, I think. Can be a little better with a helmet chart. Like I said, the arc one would be really good for clear speed. But uh, otherwise, yeah, it is a solid sort of Inquisitor. Um, as far as spells go, level 21 Tendrils, that was my first try corrupting one. Pretty damn nice. So the one other thing from the previous video that I probably didn't cover that I will mention that you can do no regen maps, complete no regen maps, if you just um, drop your clarity aura and then put a quicksilver in, oh, not a quicksilver, rather, a uh, mana flask in place of your sulfur flask. So you have this much mana left over and when you're charging about, you're not going to be regening any mana. You get it all back from uh, your mana flask as well as your cast when damage taken uh, warlords setup. So that does help quite a lot and you can definitely do every type of map out there except for the reflect maps and when you do want to go pure single target a nice atsiri flask over your quicksilver does help you get uh, get quite a bit of damage as well as you can see here good 15 20 percent extra and uh, that ends up feeling pretty damn good even without the quicksilver shield charge is still okay the quicksilver is mostly there for a real good mapping clear speed and uh you you have to really focus on some good attack speed just about everywhere to get this level of shield charge happening. And as well as that, a quality blood rage uh, goes a long way too. So some attack speed here, attack speed there, uh, attack speed just about everywhere you can get on jewels, or at least that's what I did, just a little bit on each jewel, uh, paid off a lot. And then as well as that, attack speed over here. That's pretty much a wrap for the character, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you are having similar levels of success with your own Tendies characters. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. This was Finally Got a Fridge, the Tendies character, and I'll see you next time.